Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to go to Pluto and discover one of its mysteries that we were actually finally able to solve, and something that may actually be very, very unusual. Anyway, let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, and welcome to Pluto, and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So first of all, we're actually going to be using a few simulations and a few videos from NASA directly to try to talk a little bit about what we've discovered. So this is a simulation of Pluto in Space Engine and as you can kind of tell, it is not very detailed. As a matter of fact, the det detail here is relatively low, mostly because, well, mostly because we don't really have a very high uh, resolution detail of Pluto's surface, even from the New Horizons mission that visited um, Pluto back in 2015. So if I land here, what you see is going to look a little bit disappointing. As a matter of fact, there's actually very little detail on the surface here, mostly because uh, this is still sort of work in in, uh, in progress. It's not particularly detailed um, in any of the simulations that I've been using, but it will hopefully one day come along and look better. But uh, let me actually show you what uh, NASA has recently created and posted on their New Horizons website that might actually blow your mind. So this is actually a video of them simulating flying o uh, a flyover of Pluto. And you can kind of see the amount of detail that they were able to recreate here based on the photos that they took. And what's really interesting is that they've discovered some really, really unusual formations on the surface that don't actually seem to exist in other, uh, on other objects and other parts of our solar system. And specifically, these objects were these tremendously, tremendously large, almost like blade-like formations of ice that was essentially something like a kilometer high or basically like almost a mile high um, and also obviously really really sharp um, there's actually a kind of an artist rec uh, recreation of this and let me see if i can find this for you but look how beautiful this is nasa made an amazing or did an amazing job here um, trying to recreate their flyover of pluto and I guess here is one of the possible representations of these objects. Uh, this, I believe, is from artstation.com, actually. This, someone drew this beautiful representation of these very large ice structures made of methane. And these can be as high as one kilometer or almost a mile high, uh, basically like two to three thousand feet um, in, in height. And there's like thousands and millions of these right next to each other almost like city-like formations and you could almost imagine like uh, a downtown of New York made up of entirely of these ice structures and this really baffled the scientists they couldn't really explain where these are coming from until they started googling around and looking around and found these photos uh, around um, the planet earth that seemed to have resembled these similar structures now this is a photo by Babak Tafreshi and uh, a post, uh, the photo that was posted on NASA later after the discovery of those formations on Pluto that showed a very similar ice formation right here on Earth. And here is a slightly better picture of it. Uh, but here is a picture with a guy in the middle. Now, as you can see on Earth, they don't really get to, to be so, so high. They're not really kilometer high. This is probably as big as we'll get them. But what's interesting is that they seem to be very similar to the ones on Pluto and form in a very similar way and the way that they form it is uh, through something called sublimation now sublimation is what you usually observe when dry ice starts to evaporate and create smoke it's essentially the process of uh, turning ice directly into vapor without turning it into liquid and usually this is due to the pressure differences that required uh, and so you need to have certain pressure for ice to turn into water or to, to turn into liquid. For, uh, otherwise, ice will just evaporate. And so in certain situations, in high altitudes, uh, in certain deserts or mountainous regions, when the temperature is very low and when the pressure is very low, you'll get these. And this is basically formed by uh, or through snow and ice just evaporating slowly and creating these very large ice sheets. And so something like this happened on on pluto 
And so these large formations were basically created uh, through sublimation of methane uh, due to the seasonal changes on Pluto. So if I were to kind of go back here for a second and accelerate time quite dramatically, you would see that obviously uh, Pluto starts orbiting around the sun and we can actually enable this by going into orbit here. And so sometimes Pluto is a lot closer to the sun. As a matter of fact, it's even closer than Neptune. And that happens somewhere around here-ish. So this is what you would call summer on Pluto. And then it gets to, to be farther away and this is the winter on Pluto. So in the winter you'll get uh, a lot of methane accumulate and create these ice sheets and uh, basically uh, form these really, really thick ice formations on the surface, specifically in the polar regions because that's where the temperature is more extreme. And then come the summer, the temperature increases and it starts evaporating and creates these tremendously large ice blades made of methane. Something very scary looking, something very unique and something that you might not really think of when you go uh, to Pluto, but they're there and they're tremendously terrifying. So basically think of something like this, but kilometers high and basically all over the surface of Pluto. Imagine trying to land in this location, that would be a nightmare. And so that's essentially the mystery that we were just able to solve and uh, thankfully through observation on our own planet Earth of similar conditions, we were able to kind of find out how these formations are formed or how these formations are uh, made through sublimation. And that also means that there's probably a lot of other objects in our solar system that possess these because this type of uh, sublimation effect probably occurs in other regions as well. But for Pluto, what's really interesting is that this also implies that uh, there are seasons here and on, uh, at the same time, this tells us a little bit more about its atmospheric composition and how its atmosphere of methane and nitrogen and a lot of other things that are probably in there, but mostly really nitrogen, um, kind of circulate around and form these beautiful things on its surface that we wouldn't really be able to imagine otherwise. And all of this, of course, is thanks to the New Horizons mission that visited this beautiful object back in 2015. Now, in about a year or so, and possibly already in the past for you if you're watching this in the future, we're going to visit another object that uh, New Horizons is currently headed toward, and we're going to discover a little bit more about these unusual objects in the Kuiper's Belt. But for now, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully you learned something from this. And hopefully now you, little bit, you know a little bit more about space sciences, sciences in general. And if you still haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button right now. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye. And let's go escape this and go on a mini-adventure across our galaxy. See you later, guys. Space out.